going to look at some practical examples of .NET and ASP.NET security. So we'll be focusing on private key encryption and some of the classes we can use, hashing methods, private key encryption, digital certificates, role-based security and ASP.NET security. Most of the examples that we'll find are can be found at this page and we will be using ASP.NET to implement the examples as it's easier to gain access to these examples. So, so each of the code examples will have uh, an example program with a test and then we'll look at the actual code behind each of these examples as we can see on, on the web page. So we'll be using Visual Studio 2008 and we'll just open up our website initially to gain access to some of the examples that we'll be seeing. And here they are here. Most of them begin with the word security. It just takes a little minute to, to actually load up. Okay, so let's look at encryption. For this we'll look at both public key encryption and private key encryption and then look at hashing methods. So basically there's three main types of encryption. The first type is symmetric encryption. With symmetric encryption both Bob and Alice use the same shared secret key to encrypt and decrypt. So in this case Bob takes a message and encrypts with one key sends it and then Alice and Alice then decrypts with the same key that Bob used. Some of the methods we'll see here include RC2, RC4, DES, 3DES and AES. Public key uses two different t keys and these are specially designed where Bob can encrypt with one key and then only the other key the other special key can then decrypt it. This is known as a private key and this is known as a public key. If Bob wants to communicate with Alice then Bob gets Alice's public key, encrypts it with the public key and only Alice's private key can decrypt it. So typical techniques that we see here are RSA and DSA. Along with this there is a one-way hashing method in which it should be difficult to reverse the encryption procedure. So one-way hashing takes a message and then creates a hash signature of it. So typical methods for this are MD5 and SHA. So with private key encryption we use a secret key to both encrypt and to decrypt. So with this Bob takes the Secret, the secret key encrypts his plain text into ciphertext, sends it over to the channel, and hopefully Eve doesn't have that key. And in some way, Alice has received the same uh, secret key, and then she can then decrypt it. We use the same standard algorithm on either side. This algorithm is known to Eve but Eve cannot crack the code as she cannot get the, the shared key. So some of the methods that we use uh, are either block ciphers. With a block cipher we take our text and then we some segment it up into message blocks each of these message blocks are of a certain size, such as 128 bits in this case. And then each of the message blocks are then converted into a cipher block and then joined back together again into a cipher block or a cipher stream as it is sent out. The secret key is then added to each 
of the cipher blocks. Typical methods here include DES, 3DES and AES. Sometimes we need a fast real-time en encryption on limited hardware and with this we will often use a stream cipher such as RC4 and we see this in web encryption within wireless. For this we take our plain text one bit at a time. We take our secret key, add on a random seed, typically known as an initialization vector, and then the method itself creates an infinite key. That key is then exclusive ord with the the input data stream to produce the output. Exclusive or works with a zero zero gives us a zero, a zero one. Exclusive or gives us a one, a one zero gives us a one, and a zero zero gives us a one, a zero. The advantage of exclusive or is that none of the actual original information is lost when we do the exclusive or operation. The problem that we have now, though is that if we have a message and Eve listens to the message then she can see the, the cipher stream and the problem with this is that Eve could play this back sometime in the future and it would look like a valid message even though she cannot find the encryption key she can then do a playback she could also copy and paste bits of the message she could even spend the time uh, analysing the mapping between the cipher text and the plain text. Thus, we often add what's called salt into the encryption process, and this stops the same piece of plain text arriving as the same piece of cipher text. So, this shows an example where we might take uh, some encryption and we create an encrypted block. And if we have the same data, then it will be encrypted into the same encrypted block. What we often do is add salt, and this is typically done with an initialization vector or IV. With this, we take the first encryption block, add on an initialization vector, and then we might increment the IV vector on by one, say, and then use a different encryption process. An example of this is shown here. We take an, an, an image and without salt we can see here even if we're using the top quality encryption methods such as AES we can still see the original parts of the original message uh, information in it because uh, the image itself is split into a number of segments so the same segments when they're encrypted are likely to come out with the same a cipher block. If we use salt we can see here that we, we uh, scramble all of the original data. So some of the methods we use, we started off with DES. DES uses a 56-bit key and it's fairly easy to crack DES. So uh, to overcome these problems and to keep compatibility, the 3D me 3 DES method was, was created. For this we create two keys, two 56-bit keys. We encrypt with the first key, decrypt with the second and re-encrypt with the same first key. So the key strength is about 112 bits. RC2 was meant to overcome some of the problems with uh, 3 DES and uses 64-bit uh, Block bit block block codes and uh, from 40 bits up. A competition was held for a, a much more sec secure and uh, an efficient encryption uh, method, and Rindal or AES was was selected. Okay, so let's look at our first example, which is Security 07 and we go back to our Visual Studio project and find 07 which should be here okay so with uh, ASP 
ASP.NET, we have two main files. We have the ASPX file. We can have a look at the source. And we can see here that that links to this CS file. And this is our namespace underscore default file. So those are the two main things that we need to see with inside our CS file. And we should find that our our main uh, class there is default 5 and this is the name of our CS file. Okay, so if we go back to our design, we can see here that we've created a text box. Uh, if we can find the properties here, this one's called TB message, this one's called TB encrypt, this one TB decrypt and we have a text box here called TB key and so I've added uh, an encryption button and we can see the event on the encryption button here these are all our other events and we can basically just double click on the encryption button and we can see this is the this is the method that's actually ca called in this case we create a triple, do a triple des crypto service provider and then what we do is we create our key and we create an initialization vector so 3des itself has two main elements the IV and the key the initialization vector is made up uh, with in this case we're not actually varying it uh, but we can see here that we have 64 bits with inside our 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 initialization vector. Each one of these characters is worth eight bits, and that then co is is converted into uh, a byte array. So we normally work on bytes uh, with inside our encryption process. For the the other part, uh, we have 24 characters that we create, which equates to 24 bits so we end up with a, a key byte array and with an IV byte array the number of bytes in each array will be in this case 192 divided by 8 and in this case uh, 8 so uh, the first thing we do is that we create our uh, crypto transform uh, object and then we have a, a memory stream that we're going to encrypt from and then we create from this a crypto stream so this takes the memory stream and puts it into the into a crypto st stream after this we can then write out our crypto stream uh, into uh, our ciphertext and we can convert the, in, the encrypted stream back into text using the byte string method that we have down here. And this takes a byte array and converts it back into, it takes a byte array and converts it into a string. Then to make sure it's working we can then do the reverse of it where we can decrypt from our encrypted memory stream back into text and we should be able to then check the uh, the result so if we now run the program so this is three days and we have test we'll create a key okay so we end up with uh, our cipher stream decrypted into the original text same thing can happen with RC2 with RC2 again we can create our cipher stream so we'll go back to our project and in this case we're looking for security 6 there we are so for an encrypted encryption program 
and in this case we have 12 characters so it's 12 times 8 gives us our key size and then rather than, than create the, the stream the IV vector by giving it a value we'll just create a byte so in this case it's a 64 bit IV uh, value that, that we have and then we can create the key from here we create our byte array again same again we, we create our encryptor create a memory stream we encrypt the, the memory stream into a cipher stream within memory with our encryptor and our memory stream and in this case it's our write mode we can then write that out uh, into our, our byte array and then get the encrypted stream to display in text again then we should be able to check it to see if it's running ok and with uh, Visual Studio we can run a local web server so in this case we need to set the, the default page to be this one just to check it locally and we run it make sure that everything is ok obviously the IV vector will not change so when we encrypt we will get the same cipher stream each, each time ok so it's a similar similar method in this case I've, I've uh, we're now going to look at AES encryption with AES encryption we use uh, 32 uh, bits here and we use 16 characters for the for the IV vector so in this case we're looking for 15 and we just stop this and then for 15 see here that's an encryption and that's 32 characters so if we do a quick calculation it's 32 times 8 because there's 256 bits here okay so we do the same again we create our key and we create our IV vector and put it into a byte array we create our encryptor again with the key and our IV vector create a memory stream we encrypt the memory stream with our encryptor and then print it out so it's the same type of methodology for each of the tests and we'll just have to make sure that we've started the right page here and that's the previous page so we want 15 set that as the default page if we want we can go back to the website and be able to find the example there it should run online and for this it's AES which gives us the strongest encryption that, that we we require or well, one of the strongest encryption methods for private key it's just taking a little time speed up oh, there we go. And go back to our, there we go. it's finally came up test test and we get our decrypted text back again Okay, so that that was rained down. So let's now look at public key encryption. With public key encryption, uh, both Bob and Alice create a public and a private key. Then, if Bob wants to send a secret message to Alice, Alice in some way sends her public key. 
Bob then encrypts the message with her public key to get the cipher text and then even Bob can't decrypt the cipher text and only Alice's private key can then decrypt it back again. Okay, so let's look at an example of hashing of uh, RSA. So we find RSA, which is tip 8 under Visual Studio. Okay, so in this case uh, we take our text, we then uh, encrypt, it will create a public key and a private key for us, and then we have our encrypted text and our decrypted text. So we just have a look at the uh, RSA method. So again we create our crypto service provider for RSA, and then we create, we from the RSA, this will create two keys and then we can export the, the the private key into here and we can export the public key into uh, this this variable here this will then show the two encrypted keys we then import them import the just the, the public key because it's the public key we need to encrypt we can then encrypt the message and then we can then decrypt it by taking the uh, by only loading the private key now and taking the encrypted data and then decrypting it and we, we check the result so what, what you'll find is that this example will not run on the, the website because many ISPs ban the generation of RSA keys because of a, a security problem a security risk. So what we'll do is we'll set that as the start page and then we'll run it and we should be able to generate our public and private key. We use our public key to encrypt. So this is what our public key looks like. This is the private key. We use the public key to encrypt to get this text. One thing to notice is that uh, this, as this is a block cipher, it's working on a, a large amount of uh, cipher text, and then the private key is then used to decrypt this to get the original answer again. Hopefully, every time we run it, we'll get a different set of uh, encryption keys. Each of them work. third encryption method is one way encryption or hashing. With this we take some text, we put it through our hashing algorithm and then we get some sort of hash signature. It shouldn't be possible uh, or it isn't an easy task to be able to reverse that back into the original text. So for example we might have some text here, put it through the hash and we get a hash value. Eve shouldn't be able to guess what the original text actually was. Typical methods that we use is MD4, MD5 and SHA1. So for example, uh, NT, XP and Vista use an, an NT hash using MD4 to store the password. Cisco devices also score, uh, save a hash, an MD5 encoded uh, equivalent of the password. Unfortunately it suffers from a dictionary attack and this way Eve can actually go through all the possible text values and generate a hash table, hash equivalent from these values. Eve then looks up the table, finds the hash value and then can reverse it back into the original text. Another problem is that we might have a collision 
where it is possible for different text to produce the same hash signature and it's been shown that MD5 can produce what's called a collision within less than a, than a minute. SHA1 is better uh, with a time of 18 hours. Okay, so let's look at an example of uh, generating MD5 and SHA1 and the other methods. So we look at security example 3 in this case. And we just stop this from running and we go to number 3 and look at our design so this is the input text and then we have a look at our code here so what we do is we create a crypto service provider again it's fairly easy in this case we then convert our text into a byte array. We then take that uh, byte array, then compute the the MD5 hash from that byte array. Uh, this produces an output byte array. We can then use a byte to string method, which I've created here, to convert it from a byte array. Uh, one byte is eight bits. Uh, back into a text string for us to display. So in this case we can then run and we're running the wrong one. Just make sure we get the right one. Uh, we want to start number three. Set up startup. We're going to run that and then we should be able to generate hash signature. If we take the word hello every time we run it we should be able to get the same hash signature we change one letter of it and we should be able to get completely different hash signatures ok so that, that was our original code the problem, as we've seen with uh, hash signatures, is that uh, they, they are often, we can use a dictionary attack. One way around this is to add uh, salt to it, so that we can have a range of uh, hash signatures for the same original ciphertext, and it becomes more difficult for Eve to try and guess the original text. Okay, so if we look at example 3b, we should be able to see uh, an example here of this. Stop there and go to 3, 3b. In this case, I've added in four uh, strings as passwords to increase the number of possible hash uh, signatures for a single instance of some text. So we just set that up to be the startup. And we just run it. And what we should see now is that uh, the the number of signatures created should increase. So let's use the word text as the salt. Let's use the word text again should give us the same hash signature, which is bill and we can see a different hash here there's a different one again using Fred so the more salt elements that we use the the greater the, the, the values of the hash signature will be for, the, for a single instance ok, so it's a very similar code but in this case we add in some, some salt uh, and then we use that as part of the hashing function. The last method with inside hashing is HMAC. With HMAC we provide both authentication and uh, validity of, of a message. So in this case Bob sends the, the word hello, takes a HMAC signature of it, 
and with HMAX we have a shared private key that both Bob and Alice know. Then that signature is then sent over. At the other end, uh, Alice receives this. She does her own HMAC with, with the same shared private key and if the hash signatures uh, are the same then she validates the message and she also validates that it was the correct shared key that created the message. Okay, so example one will give us an HMAC example. So we we'll set this one up to be a startup. And just load it up. So in this case we've got a message, we have a key and we'll generate the HMAC from it. It's a similar way as, as before, but in this case we, we get a key byte and when we create our uh, original hash uh, objects, we use the key byte to create them. So if we just try this. And a weakness of some of these methods is that we're obviously using strings, well-known strings to, uh, for our keys, which can be easily guessed. But uh, we, it's useful to use them as, as a tech as a test. Hopefully if we use this one with hello and then we should get the same HMAC uh, produced. Uh, nope. Uh, obviously slipped up. Oh sorry, and that's the SHA one that that I've created them. That that has select that has worked perfectly. So let's look at how we can use uh, digital certificates and within ASP.NET and .NET. So with digital certificates, uh, get around the problem is how does Bob get his public key to Alice? Also, uh, how does uh, Alice authenticate herself to Bob? With this, digital certificates are often used to, prov to uh, send public keys and also to, uh, to identify authentic identity. So with the certificate, we get the basic details of the certificate, especially who it's issued to and who it was issued by and when it's valid. And the key thing we see is the public key. In this case, we have a 2048-bit RSA key. We often don't see the private key if it's a distributable uh, certificate. This is the key here. We should see a thumbprint to make sure the certificate hasn't been changed and especially the issuer if we just uh, try and have a look at uh, here's, a, here's an example certificate that we might have with some details and a serial number and we should be able to see the public key here and we see there that SHA is used as a, as a thumbprint Okay, so we get two types of certificates. One is when we buy a certificate or are issued it, then we get this type of certificate that has both a public and a private key on it. When we export our certificate, we will again get this type of certificate which only has the public key on it. So the public key format looks if we if we've just bought a, a certificate, we might get an email and it might have this body of text and it's this body of text that we can use to import into our certificate. This shows an example of how to import our certificate into our, into our storage. Uh, so an example uh, that we might see, we can copy that to file and export into a base64 format. It 
tells us what do we want to export and that's it and then let's see if we can get to it Okay, and and uh, this is how we tend to use our certificate. Uh, if if Bob wants to send Alice uh, an encrypted message, she can send her digital certificate. Bob will then take her public key off that and then encrypt it, and then Alice can use probably her other certificate, which is the public and private key, and then decrypt that that message. We can also use it to provide identity in that Bob actually encrypts a hash method with his private key. Then he forwards his digital certificate to the other side. Then Alice then uh, Alice decrypts the message with a private key. She ends up with a hash signature. She can then use Bob's public key to decrypt that hash and if she gets the same hash signature as the the one that was taken from Bob's certificate, then she knows it was Bob that had actually, that had sent the original message. Okay, so let's look at the code, and this is security example ten. Let's just stop here, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll run it locally and then see how it runs on the website so this this just this reads in some uh, details from from the, the server and then uh, we can open up the text with inside the certificate so we'll just try and run this now Example 10. We can view that certificate and just in some text. So that's what the certificate actually looks like. We can import that one if, if we want. If we actually load that up from the server, we can see here there's some of the details, basic text the algorithm used, the issuer, and and so on.